back to my channel and happy Sunday. This week is a very exciting week because it is the start of fall DIYs on the channel. That is one of my favorite times of year. I absolutely love the fall season. We live in Florida and it's super hot here, so fall means the start of cold weather. It means Christmas is just around the corner and that is the best time of year for me. We're gonna start the season with a fun fall DIY. Currently, our house is not decorated at all for fall, so we're gonna be slowly decorating for the end of September, October, and November. I keep them up all the way until Christmas time. And then we do a switch and we go into the Christmas season, which is another super fun one. But if you're interested in fall decorations, DIYs, and decorating our house for the new season, then stick around, watch this video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This week, we're gonna start our fall DIYs by doing a fall wreath for our front door. Currently, I have a wreath on our front door that I made, um, and it's just a very simple, kind of all season, eucalyptus inspired wreath. I keep it up all throughout the year, unless it's a special holiday, like fall or Christmas time. And then I swap out the wreath. But right now, I do not have a fall wreath for my door. I've been really wanting to do a kind of darker, moody, fall vibe wreath for the door. And that's kind of just my style for fall in general, is sort of more on that like moody, jewel tone sort of end of the spectrum. I'm gonna be keeping that in mind as we incorporate new DIYs and decor into my fall kit that I can decorate with. And I'm also gonna be keeping in mind that I want this to translate as we move through the next few months towards Christmas so that it's not screaming Halloween and I feel the need to change it as the season moves forward. I wanna be able to have this kind of carry us through. With those things in mind, I started looking for some inspiration for color palettes and styles of wreaths that I want to be able to make to put on the front door. And I'll put some pictures of the different inspiration photos that I saw that kind of led me towards the faux flowers that I was gonna be picking out. And with that in mind, I took those photos and went to Joanne Fabrics and found some faux flowers that could work with the wreath styles that I wanted and the color palettes that I was aiming for. If you've ever been to a Joanne, you know that they are pretty much always on sale. There's always coupons. But currently, right now, I just went like less than a week ago to pick up these faux flowers, so it should still be happening. I think it said it goes until the end of the month. They were having a super sale on their faux flowers that were in the line that I chose from. And so that was 60% off of those flowers. And then if you had additional coupons, you could apply that as well. I'm telling you this so that one, if you want to remake this wreath, you can go and get these while they're still on sale. And two, because I want to kind of break down the cost of what I spent to make this wreath compared to what a wreath of this style and size would typically cost so that you guys are able to see just how budget something like this could be and how much less expensive you can make a DIY project if you plan it out ahead of time. So of course, you know, a lot of times when people are talking DIYs, they can be more expensive than just buying something at the store. So the things that you have to look at with making a DIY, if you want it to be budget friendly and you want to do it yourself for that reason, along with enjoying doing DIYs, is one, where are you gonna be buying things? Two, what materials do you need? And then three, the quality comparison. So those are the things that I look at before I start doing a DIY because I wanna make sure that it's not only something that I enjoy doing, but it's worth my time and effort and also that it's budget friendly so that I'm not spending more on something that I could get at the same quality store-bought. So at the end of this video, what I plan to do is kind of break down the different things that I bought, how much they cost compared to how much they would have sold for not on sale. This will help us to kind of see the comparison of how much money you can save if you plan it out like we're doing in all of our DIYs. And as we move through the fall season, we're gonna start adding to our decor. Um, I have a few other things in mind. We're gonna start with the wreath for the front door, but I do wanna make some other styles of wreaths to go in our sunroom. Um, we have quite a few windows in that space, and I think that it would be really pretty to kind of have them hanging throughout the windows 
in a smaller, simpler style than the one in the front door so that it doesn't pull from the attention of that wreath, but it kind of just adds to the overall vibe. So those are gonna be in future videos. So if you like the one from today and you're interested in seeing some more wreaths and different DIYs that I'm gonna be doing for the fall season, then don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see the new videos coming out every Sunday and follow along on the fall DIY journey with me as I start to decorate our home. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the video and start making our wreath for the front door. just kind of placing the flowers where I think I might want them to go um, so that I can get a feel for what my wreath is going to look like. I haven't attached or glued anything down yet so I can still move them as I cut some more pieces. Um, but this just kind of helps me to visualize it. I also really like to leave some of these long stems on um, to start off with. That way I can feed them through the wiring here and it also gives me a little bit more leafy foliage to fill out the wreath um, so that I can make sure that there's no bald spots and I don't have to try to fix a spot later on. I can just kind of work with it as I go and then cut them back if I want to. And when I have smaller ones like this that aren't gonna take up as much space, I like to set these off to the side and use them as a filler later on after the majority of the wreath has been kind of set in because they will fit pretty much anywhere. And so that just makes it a little bit easier to see where we need some of that color or a little bit more fullness to kind of complete the look of it. As you start to feel happy with how certain sections of your wreath are laying and the color combinations that you have, like right now I have a couple of the different bluey purple flowers down um, and I'm liking the positioning and the balance of these two. I like that they're kind of playing off of each other on both sides. I'm gonna start to glue down what I have because I know that I want it to look like this, at least at this point. Putting them into their positions and I'm gluing any points of contact that I see. Any spot where I can get the stem, the leaves, the flower to touch the wire frame, I'm putting a hot glue connector right there so that they're able to hold on in as many places as possible so that the wreath is really strong and secure when all the flowers are in. And so what I'm gonna do after I put some glue on is press at the point where the glue is so that it can dry really firm and tight to the frame. So we're gonna start working our way around the frame, doing this with the ones that we have down right now, and then we'll add in some more. All right, so this is where we're at after gluing that first round. So I'm gonna to start to look at the next group of flowers that I'm gonna incorporate in. And I think I wanna go with some reds next. So I'll work with these bigger flowers and some of these smaller ones to fill in some of the gaps. And then I'll add the remaining flowers as kind of like a filler to what we already have. So we'll cut some of these off with our wire cutters and then start to place them in. to do as well so I like to leave the stems through to kind of fill in but then if you want one like this that's going to be flat on your wreath frame facing out as just like a full flower um, cutting it really short so cutting it all the way up like here at the base 
and then removing some of these leafy bits so that you can use those separately is a really good way to fill in some space and kind of give a bigger flower effect so that they're not all facing out of the frame. Um, so I'm going to take this one and glue it flat on like that. And then I'll take the leafy bit and instead of wasting it, I'll add it in somewhere like over here to give a little bit more green. I think that I'm going to use all of these bigger red ones on this particular wreath because I like this um, darker color as kind of the focal point of the wreath. So I want to make sure that I use a good bit of that when I'm filling it in. Okay, so I have them set out right now. Um, so that they're spaced throughout the wreath and then I'm going to add in some of my greenery as I go to fill in any gaps that I see and kind of just add some foliage and fullness wherever it needs it. Um, so right now I like how these red flowers are placed throughout. So I'm going to glue the ones that I have and then we'll go back in with some of the smaller red pieces and a few more of these other ones that we have going on. So this is our finished wreath. I really like how it turned out. I like the color combinations. I think it has a really good fullness to it. You know, it's full and it draws your eye all the way around it, but it's not overwhelming. So I think it turned out exactly how I was hoping it would. Um, so I wanted to do one last thing to it. So I brought a little door hook over so that we can finish up inside before we put it outside of the front door. But it will be situated about like that, I want this part to be hanging down in the center on the bottom, but I wanted to add some ribbon to it. So I got two different colors of ribbon to use with this wreath, and then I have some future different styles of wreaths that we're gonna be making that we'll use the other color for, or maybe a combination of both. So the first one that I have is this burnt orange, let's see, what do they call it? They call it crushed terracotta. Crushed terracotta is the color. So I kind of think of it as more of like a burnt orange, but this is like a very typical fall color to me. Um, and then the other one that I got is this like plum burgundy sort of color. So both are velvet and both are about, this one's about an inch and a half wide and this one's about two inches wide. I was looking at the colors that we have in our wreath and I want it to be complementary without being too matchy-matchy. This one is obviously very matching to the colors that we have. And this one is a little bit more contrasting. Thinking that I want to go with the burnt orange sort of color and then save this one for some future wreaths that we're going to do. Now that we have our color picked out, we need to figure out the placement of where we want our ribbon to be. Originally, I was thinking that we could have it hanging from the bottom, but because we have this, I think that it would just be too bottom heavy doing that. So I think that we should have it hanging from the top bit down, and we can try it. If it doesn't look good, then we can move it. Um, those are obviously two of the more like traditional, obvious places to put them. You also could do it off center or you know, a combination of different things. And then there's also different ways that you can tie your ribbon that will make it a little bit more interesting than the typical just like bow that you would see a lot of times. So what I'm thinking that I'll do is tie it off just in like a knot on the top and try to position the knot towards the back of the wreath and just let it hang. 
And I think that this will give it a very natural look and also a little bit more undone of a look, which I really like for the fall season. I think that you can kind of lean into that more like moody, undone sort of vibe of things where Christmas time and other holidays are a little bit more polished. I really like to kind of play that up more during the fall season. So we're going to give it a try. We're going to tie this on and see how it looks. And if we don't like it, then we'll try a different one. Okay, so this is where I have it right now. It's obviously a little bit off-center just for the purposes of getting our ribbon through. Um, but I wanted to play with the positioning a little bit because right now I have it feeding over through the back. We could also do it over the top like this or we could tie it in the back and let it hang or we could cut it and feed this part through the back as well so that both pieces of ribbon come out through the back um, and that's kind of the direction that i'm leaning towards i'm not entirely sure how it's going to turn out but i'm going to cut them to be about the same length and then we can try feeding it through and see how it looks like this and then i want to cut my other one so it's a little bit neater as well So now that we have them both cut, I'm going to try feeding it through the back to see how that looks. Okay, so I think that this is how I'm going to loop the ribbon. Um, so what I did is I found the center point and I ran the ribbon through the bottom wire of our wire frame. Um, and I'll show you as well what it looks like. But if you see right here, we have the top, middle, and the bottom wire and I ran it through the bottom coming out the back and then tied a little knot on the back so that you can't see it and faced the velvety side forward so that way it's just kind of hanging back there and I think that this is a really nice complement to the wreath because it doesn't pull focus from these pieces down here and I think when you have it in the front like that it distracts from a lot of the flowers on the wreath and this just kind of ties in some more of those fall colors without taking away from them. So I'm really happy with how this wreath turned out. And of course, I'll link everything that we have. I'll also go through the breakdown of the price points of what I spent for things versus full price versus how much a wreath of this size and style typically costs so that you can see. We're going to go ahead and get this outside and decorate with it so that we can see it on the front door. And as we move through our next few videos with fall DIYs and decors, we're going to decorate the house more and more every time. So let's go through the price breakdown and comparison of the wreath that we made versus a typical wreath of this size and fullness. So I have my two receipts here and I went ahead and did the math for us so we can kind of go through it. For everything that we needed for the wreath, which keep in mind that some of these things I already had because I do a lot of projects and so you may have some as well. Um, so I'm not accounting for the hot glue gun or hot glue because I already had that. The wreath hanger on the door I already had, but everything else that we used is included in this. So to go through kind of the breakdown of what we used and how much it cost, I did consider discounts that I got, sales that were going on. If I didn't need to use all of something, then I prorated it to kind of accommodate for what was used because the cost of the remainder will go towards a future project, if that makes sense. So like for the flowers, I didn't use all of the flowers. So I took out the portion that was not used from the cost so that it wasn't counted in this project because that is left over that I can use for another project. The frame that we used, the metal frame, 
I got at the dollar store and that was $1.25. And then counting up all of the florals that I got, the total for everything that I spent for that was $26.77. So there was a sale going on when I got these flowers. It was 60% off. I also got 15% off. The ribbon was $15 for 10 yards. Okay, so with the ribbon, I estimate that I used between a yard and a yard and a half of ribbon for this. So doing that math, it would have been $2 of ribbon that was used. That is everything that we purchased to make this wreath. And on top of the discounts that were already happening in the store, I also got from the app a $15 discount for the total of everything that I bought. I bought some other things while I was there. I bought a total of 23 items when I went there that day and to make this wreath it was 11 items so that's about half. I'm estimating that I got about seven dollars off of this part of what I bought. With the amount of flowers that we used because we had some left over I had about one and a half bouquets of flowers remaining. That would be about four dollars and eighty three cents of flowers that was left over for future projects. I'm gonna deduct those two things from our total to get our final amount that was spent. We spent a total of $18.19 to make this wreath. Considering that a wreath of this size, color scheme, fullness, online typically goes for anywhere between $50 to $80, we only spent $18. That means that if we're looking at the more high-end version, which a lot of times this color scheme for fall is not super common, I had a hard time finding a lot of these more jewel tone moody colored wreaths for fall. Mainly where I was seeing it was places like Anthropology and Etsy. Both those places are more high-end and their wreaths tend to be more towards the $80 end of the spectrum. If we look at it with that in mind, we saved anywhere from $32 to $62 from making this wreath. I would definitely say that this is a great way to make things for your home. And if you guys like seeing how everything breaks down, I can do this again in the future. Honestly, every time that I do a DIY, I say, money doing it because I do it in this way. All right, well, that wraps up our video for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching and that you give it a try yourself. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see more videos like this every week. And I'll see you guys next Sunday for another fall-inspired DIY.